What's going on? This Sunday, it begins. The first corporate sprint where we're going to help you set up your first holding company. So what is this? This is going to be an event where I'll be online Sunday, Tuesday, and Thursday to answer your questions about setting up your first holding company, setting up your first operating company. So you definitely want to go ahead and get into the corporate citizen playbook. Right now, the link's below. It's in the first comment for you to go ahead and get in because we will be tuning this up because we're going to be all about the customer service. So with that, let's get into this video. One of the things I consistently see online is how to get away from trading time for money. And I consistently see people in my estimation, misusing the term passive income. I was watching a video today where the lady sells online courses and she was talking about, she was creating free content and she was selling her courses in the background. I've been selling online courses since 2014, which puts me at about nine years. Let me go ahead and let you know something. If you do not have consistent promotion for your online course, they're not going to sell. So here's the thing, and this is some of the business knowledge. Um, when you have to do something, IT action to get a result on this end, that's not passive. And I, I, I consistently see people using the word passive income, passive income, in it properly. You rent a car on Toro, you gotta buy the car, you've gotta manage the car, you gotta get the car tuned up. There's nothing passive about renting cars. I know from personal experience, because I used to have a car rental business. So one of the things that you will consistently see all of the people who are trying to sell a course or trying to market their thing is you must get away from working, trading your time for money. I got a question for you. How have you learned to do things in life? When you went to college, you were physically in college in class and you were physically doing your, your work so you traded time for education. When you want to learn how to ski or you want to learn how to ride a surfboard, you must be physically present to plant your feet on those skis of that surfboard. So you're trading time to learn a new skill. And I want you to go ahead and name a way that you an ordinary person with no extreme skill sets can go ahead and create a situation where you're not actively working for your money. Please put that in the comments because here's the thing, unless you already have a large sum of capital and I will explain that in a minute, it's pretty hard for you to create a dynamic where of this passive income. And let's go ahead and talk about passive income that provides enough income to create a living wage. And let's go ahead and say that number is $5,000, $5,000. Now, why is it so hard to create a passive income system as a normal, regular, person. This is where we bring in the example of someone who starts with a lot, a lot of money. I have a friend when his father died, he got $10 million. At the time he was a VP of the company. And, you know, I remember we went to lunch cause you know, I actually went to the funeral and stuff and uh, we were talking and he was like, I'm about to get $10 million. And I want to use that money to create a situation where I no longer have to work. Cause the thing is his father was extremely private person 
and he knew his father was doing well financially, but he had no clue to how much money his father had. He had no clue. So this, you know, first, I mean, his father, he, his father lived to be about 92, so he had a good long life. And, you know, there was the death of his father, which was expected because his father was sick. And then there was the moment, the reading of the will, and he got this money because the way his father, his father was a really smart guy. His father set this up where his son got this money from a life insurance policy. So there were no taxes. So he had $10 million. And I was like, I was like, you know, we we're just talking. I was like, you always wanted to get in real estate. Why don't you buy an apartment complex? And he said, you know, I've been thinking about that. I've been thinking about that. Right. And when he got the money, you know, cause there was a process, they had to get the death certificate and everything for the release to check and everything. But he started looking at apartment complexes. And this is one of the things that you may find a little strange. It's not really easy to go out and buy an apartment complex, even when you have the money. So he would go in because he was considered a first time investor. And a lot of people were a little skittish and he kept looking, he kept looking and he kept looking. And he found this apartment set that was being sold by this elderly couple because they were like ready to be done with it. They, the man was like 75, his wife was 72, and they sold him his first apartment complex for $10 million. And I believe, because once again, apartment complexes have gone up tremendously. Um, he, he sold it from the 10 million, and I do believe that this apartment complex almost provided him close to a million dollars in income the first year, the first year. And there was taxes and expenses and there, you know, but that was the gross revenue close to a million. And after paying taxes and stuff and oh, cause you know, cause he invested in that. He didn't have to pay income taxes because that was an investment and he wasn't going to have to start paying taxes until he made more money than he invested in there which will happen really soon. So he went on and then he held this apartment complex for five years. Then someone offered him 20 million. What did he do? He took the 20 million and then he put the money in uh, that exchange. Then he bought another apartment complex because here's the thing, because he got so much money at one time, he was in, you know, th this was funny. He kept his job for like three or four years, even though he didn't need it. it. It it became fun time because they would just like take his check and blow it because the apartment complex was providing a livable wage and he had enough staff, he had everything. Literally he had to do absolutely nothing except work with the taxes, you know, and sign paperwork and stuff for taxes and sign a few checks. He had to do nothing. So because he got such a large chunk of money, he was able to immediately buy into a passive income revenue stream. But how many of you are getting $10 million from your dear old dad? Not many. And this is one of the things because typically the thing that happens with people is everyone is trying to get away from work trying to get away from doing the work, trying to get away from actually actively working. And this is why I've literally, and I'm going to say it, I have seen people on the internet blatantly lie and say that, oh, I've got seven passive income streams. I have 12 passive income streams. I have 15 passive income streams. My name is Glendon Cameron, and I at the moment don't have one passive income stream. I don't have one. I'll tell you the story of when I did have a passive income stream. Um, years and years ago, I got heavy into consulting, right? And I really did not focus on selling online courses because my consulting clients were paying me a good bit of money. And my online courses, which were deposited in the YouTube description box, people found it. And I made $115,000 in passive income. 
but I was still making YouTube videos. So I was talking about the online course, I, not the online course, I was talking about the consulting. And I made a ton of money from passive income. The courses were set up. I didn't have to promote them. I didn't mention them and they just sold. Now, one of the things that you will under have to understand is it's going to be incredibly hard for you to establish a passive income stream that provides livable income. Now, can you go out and buy, I, like, I have some dividend stock. I went out and bought some dividend stock, SCHD, and I've got some shares of Apple. And my shares of Apple have gone up to the tune of, it was 150. Now I think Apple is, uh, how much? Let, let's go ahead and see how much is this Apple stock? Because when I bought it, it was um, 150 Apple stock price. All right, so I bought it for 150, it's now 87. So my Apple stock portfolio, which I spent like a thousand bucks has gone up $350. And my SEC stock, which pays a dividend, I think I'm gonna make $25 from that stock. So from that passive income ploy. And this is why we need to have the conversation about creating passive income levels that provide a living income, provide a living wage. Because, you know, like I said, you can go out and buy some dividend stock, you, and you can go ahead and legitimately start earning passive income, but the reality is what you're looking for is passive income that you can live off, which is a totally different ass, uh, animal than establishing passive income. It's totally different animal. So, and this is why the average person cannot develop passive income. Now, number one, the lack of money. 80% of the country makes less than $40,000 per year single person income. And I know I, 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 I constantly get people say, where did you get that number from? I'm gonna tell you where I got that number from. I actually did the calculations. I took all the jobs and government jobs. I went to the Google machine. It took me a few hours. And then I came up with the number that 80% of America doesn't make $40,000 a year. So this right here, and also in those numbers, those same 80% of America, like if you had two people, husband, and wife, making 40, $80,000 a year, they could not afford the average single family house price. So they can't afford to buy a house. They don't have enough money to start establishing passive income protocols. And this whole conversation of getting away from trading your time for money as if it was snap your fingers easy. It's not. It's simply not. Now, what you can do, what you can do is create a business where you can make money in your sleep. I got a video coming up for that. We'll be on the tune of that. So let's go ahead and talk about my life. Uh, I don't have any passive income. I do not consider what I do to be a passive income dynamic uh, because I still have to promote my courses. So last night I got three sales, I will sleep. So that's pretty good to go ahead and create a business, create a situation where you can make money with less effort. See, this is why I think that the whole notion of building something passive is so hard and it's pretty much impossible for the average person. But the average person within, and let me go ahead and give it the whole deal, one to two, one to three years can build a business and set the business up with automation tools where they're making money in their sleep. 
even though it's not passive, I want you to think, if you can make money 24 hours a day, and let's say, let's go ahead and like say, if you were to make 25 bucks an hour, let's say 25 bucks an hour times 24. Whoa, 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 25 times 24. Okay, I was like, that was a little hot. $600 a day. If you could do that times seven, that's 4,200 a week. If you could do that times four, that's 16,000 a month. If you could do that times 12, it's 201,000. So let's go ahead and say you have a business, a little business, and you're making 25 bucks an hour around the clock because you're selling stuff from your website online. You're making money when you're asleep. Not exactly passive income because when you're awake, there's things you have to do. But one of the things that you have to understand is building a business, creating systems, creating automation is going to be much, much better than you trying to create a source of revenue from passive income that provides a living wage. It's going to be really, really hard because the average person, number one, doesn't have the money. Number two, doesn't have the connections. Number three, doesn't have the resources. Once again, you will need to be in possession of about 3 million on the small side to go out and buy yourself some passive income. And this is why this whole conversation of trading your time for money is so out of whack, so out of line with reality. Because I'm not gonna sit here, cause you know, if I was one of those internet personalities, I could live here and like, hey, I made passive income last night. I made money while I was asleep. And I would have been leaving out very important details. Number one, how did that passive income happen? Oh, because I'm here on YouTube promoting my course. That's not passive. That's a lower level of activity. I will give you that. Um, but it's not passive income. It's a lower level of activity. I'm using systems and automation to make money. But once again, this whole conversation, like, once again, we can all buy stock or my favorite thing, getting passive income from real estate. I, I actually did some research on this. And um, one of the things that I uh, come to understand in recent, that you understand that most people who invest in real estate don't make a lot of money. Most people. There are some people making killer sums of money. Uh, there's a guy by the name of Pace Mobley. And Pace Mobley is the, um, I forget the name of it. It's a very fancy real estate term. Someone will probably put it in the comments. But Pace Mobley has thousands of homes. And because the thing is, average income for his home is like 100 bucks per month. And I'm like, that's hardly nothing. But when you multiply that times a thousand, you've got like 1,500 homes times 100 bucks per month. That's 150K a month times 12. That's 1.5 million. So once again, you need the scale. You're not going to make passive a livable income from one or two or three or four houses unless they're completely paid off, which from what my understanding is, the majority of the real estate out there on a self of an owner isn't paid off. And you know, some of this stuff has a 30 year loan and some of this stuff has much worse short term hard money loans that are not really that good for the real estate investor. But, 
you know, this whole notion of just trading your time. And th this is one of the reasons that I'm trying to pull so many people into the corporate citizen uh, mindset. Because once you understand that you got to build companies, you got to serve stuff, in three to five years, you can have that lifestyle where you can have time for your children. And I'm going to say something. As a man, as a man, you should be working on this before I'm going to say this as a man, you should be working on building up your business and getting yourself situated before you meet that girl of your dreams. I am not a man that believes in building together and struggle and all this other stuff. I'm, I'm not part of that crew, but you should be building your business, getting yourself situated. So when that woman comes in your life, she can fit into a compartment that you've already built because you have built up your life. And this is one of the things that I consistently see that a lot of men do not even think that far, that I need to build my empire before my queen comes into my life. They don't even think that far because once again, this is one of the reasons I really push the corporate citizen playbook because once you get into the habit of, I'm gonna start one business, and I know in the future I'm gonna start another business, and I know in the future I'm gonna start another. I have seen so many people online that have multiple businesses, and they just don't have it set up the way that they need to have it set up. It just, like, I got an LLC over here, I got an LLC over here, I got an LLC. Why don't you have a holding company? Why don't you have a holding company? It just puzzles my mind. But then again, maybe these folks have not been open to the education and the stuff that I have been open to. Because once you get the education, once you learn this stuff, once you get in the know, this stuff becomes incredibly powerful and very, very important. And this is one of the reasons that I'm gonna be pushing all of my students to get their holding companies and stuff set up next week. Because here's the thing. Until you get set up, it's hard to move to the next step because you, you're still just spinning your wheels in this one step. And then we're going to get the holding companies, then we're going to get the operating companies, then we're going to get the companies started, then we're going to start making money. That's the thing that we're going to be doing. So once again, this whole notion of trading time for money is foolishness and it is craziness because... This is how the majority of people in the United States of America make their money. They trade time for a paycheck. And this includes doctors. Doctors, they trade time for money. When a doctor is in the operating room working on you, he is physically there. He's trading his time for a very large check, but he's trading his time for money. And this whole notion that you can somehow... Because I, I saw someone leave a comment that doctors were doing surgery by remote. The number of doctors who are doing surgery by remote is so pathetically small that it ain't even worth mentioning. It's not like 30% of the surgeries out there are being done by remote doctors working in a remote office. They ain't happening. The ORs of the local hospitals are jam-packed with doctors who are actually physically present for surgery. So, you know, in the future, yeah, we'll get to this thing where we'll have automations and we'll have robots and we'll have all these things. Yeah, in the future, but the future ain't today. So if you want to make that money, you will be trading time for that money. And if you want to set yourself up, and let's talk about the future. You want to set yourself up where in the future you have more options, you have more time, you have more flexibility, start a business. And this Sunday, we will be, I'll be present for the first leg of the corporate sprint where we're going to be getting our holding company set up. So once again, the, the link to this stuff is below. My name is Glendon Cameron. I'll be seeing you guys in the next video.